Hey entrepreneurs, it's AJ. Come check this out. This is pretty cool. So this is my new website header for 2023. And it's a little bit different because I'm trying to experiment next year to be a disruptive personality. Uh, not the sort of disruptive personality that's going to get arrested. So you're not going to see me in the news with a police chase or anything like that. No, 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 no. It's more about, I feel as though with all this rapid change and uncertainty in the world out there, I feel as though a lot of leaders actually want to shake up their organization away from business as usual thinking but they might not really know how to go about it. So I wanna be their disruptive personality to go into an organization to support them through one of my keynote presentations or lunch and learn session and to speak to their leaders and teams and managers and to really disrupt business as usual thinking, shake things up, present different ways of looking at existing challenges, which is what I kind of already do, but I'm going hard on this personality next year and let's see where it takes us. The other thing I'm doing next year is I'm releasing uh, my speaker training program, which is Impact and Influence. And uh, for those of you who know me, I've been a professional speaker for the last 10 years, and I've learned a few things along the way. And I actually already do speaker training, one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions, and I work with a lot of up-and-coming speakers to shift their thinking on you know, how to actually create a presentation that actually impacts and influences others instead of throwing up a PowerPoint slide and killing everyone in the room, right? Uh, so I've been actually doing that, but I never really talk about it because uh, I, can't, I can't compete with the people that actually have formal speaker training programs. Uh, it just doesn't work and I don't have the time, money or energy to do it. So one-on-one -on -one people have been approaching me privately and I work with them for a couple of sessions. And I got this really cool party trick that I do where I actually, never mind, I'm getting distracted. <laughs> you know, it doesn't matter. Anyway, so that's the second thing I'm doing. I'm doing speaker training program and that'll be up there for my 35,000 students on Udemy. So I'm really excited about that. I might put out a link and share that or you'll discover it through the interwebs. Uh, it's pretty cool, and I'm very excited for that. The third thing I'm doing next year is it's come to my attention that it looks like I'm going to have to bite the bullet and write a book, a physical book. I've published nine business guides already, so this is the first physical book that I'm going to have to write, and uh, it's a little bit scary, I tell you. Uh, before you go sort of offering me authorship training programs, I'm good. I'm good. I know what I need to do. I just need to do it, uh, so that's very exciting, but... The reason why I'm writing a book is I had this conversation over the Christmas break with someone and he basically explained how things worked inside his organization in terms of learning and development. They do 70, 20, 10. So 70% of stuff is on the job training. 20% is use an expert either internally or sometimes externally. And 10% is formalized classroom training. And it suddenly dawned on me, oh my God, I'm only dealing with that 20% or even less because a lot of organizations don't actually... Uh, they go internally to source what they're missing. And that's a real problem for me because my work, you don't really realize what, what how powerful it is unless you have a conversation with me. And you're not going to have a conversation with me until someone tells you to have a conversation with me. And to be honest, that's kind of what I got really wrong in 2022. I grossly underestimated the amount of trust that it takes for someone to vouch for me. I've always subscribed to the methodology of be so good they can't ignore you. And it turns out here in Australia, they can't ignore you, right? Uh, so I need more people to go out there and vouch for me and say, look, AJ doesn't look like the traditional speakers on those big stages or the consultants that you use or the speakers that you work with through lunch and learn sessions, but he's still got something of value to offer and you should have a conversation with him. Uh, in order for me to get enough people to do that here in uh, corporate Australia, and vouch me beyond the unconscious bias, it's gonna take me another 10 years of time, money, and energy, and I just don't have it in me, you know? I really thought that my work would really generate a buzz, but it's not enough. It's not enough here. Um, and, you know, as much as that hurts my heart, in my home country, I can't get ahead in my home country, it is what it is, and uh, I just need to get on with it, you know? The whole world is my playground now. And so that explains also why I'm going hard with the disruptive personality, because I think it'll be incredible value to other countries around the world that are really wanting to do things differently and just need a guide or a suggestion or two to reframe their current challenges into opportunities. So that's really exciting. 
Speaking of countries around the world, this year I took heart-centered innovation out to three countries. I did Vietnam, Turkey, and China. And I want to talk to you about the China project because it's a little bit interesting. And hopefully you'll see the reason why we do everything we do here as part of this entrepreneur entrepreneurial community. So the China project came about from a very good friend of mine, Mr. Everett Hill. Everett's been a part of this community for a while now, and he's been following my work. And Everett's the sort of person that he doesn't need someone to be face to face in front of them to be able to trust them. You know, he'll see their work, admire their work, he'll message them, he'll have a conversation with them, he'll build a relationship with them, which is so rare. And that's a skill that a lot of people don't have, but perhaps they should. A big part of a lot of reasons why all these leaders around the world demanded that their workforce came back physically to the office was because they just don't have the skills and the mindset to know how to manage people that aren't sitting in front of them face to face. So Everett's not one of those people. Anyway, Everett's a high school teacher in China earlier this year, and China went in and out of those lockdowns because of their zero COVID policy. And so what happened was Everett was sitting around a table with his colleagues, and they were all stressed out of their mind thinking, how do we keep students engaged until the end of term while we're doing virtual classes? And it turns out they were only getting about five people show up, um, maximum 10 people show up virtually. Everyone was exhausted. And so randomly he picks up his phone, jumps on LinkedIn Messenger, and he sends me this message. Hey, crazy idea, but would you be able to do a two-week training course for students on entrepreneurial thinking? I'm on my way to a meeting, but luckily I saw the message, and I messaged back saying, yep, yeah, what does that look like? He said, I don't know. And so we have a conversation via LinkedIn Messenger where he talks to the people in the room, and he relays all that information, all the answers to my questions back to me, all via LinkedIn Messenger. And we... Together, over the next 20 minutes, we build out this entrepreneurial program for students all via LinkedIn Messenger. Absolutely insane, right? But when you think about it and you have a look at everything I've achieved in my career, it's a very AJ thing to do, right? So uh, one of the things that we did as part of this program was I asked students to present you know, a project that they want to innovate their school with. And the ideas that came out were pretty awesome. Check it out. Have a look. So the students, uh, one of them wanted to develop an app, uh, a social media app for students, by students, but internally. None of the Facebook, the TikTok or the Snap whatever's. Uh, this was internal and it was basically motivating students, you know, supporting them. So it could be time management tips. It could be motivational quotes, study music, you know, really creative stuff. Another student recognized that procrastination was a big problem for students. So they wanted to look at, well, how does procrastination work? And how can we help students to stop procrastinating? And also check out the quality of these slides, right? They're pretty good. I've, I've seen professional speakers that don't have slides like this. And, you know, it's, it's pretty cool. So third one was, um, here's a metaphor. A flat tire is a metaphor for a lack of motivation. And they use this analogy, you know, to explain this concept because I taught them about storytelling. The way you convey an idea, you know, it might have the greatest idea in the world, but if no one buys into it, it's completely useless. So I taught them about strategic storytelling, right? And they took it on board. And the best thing about this project was Everett is now the VP at that school. And it's a new role. He wants to bring change into the school and his leaders want him to implement change in the school. So now he just happens to have a ton of ideas to innovate the school for students that are being generated by students. And that, my friends, is why I get up every morning, every single day and go to battle with the status quo, trying to get heart-centered innovation out there to the rest of the world because it accelerates positive change. All those students are going to have incredible impact on their lives, their career, just from these two weeks of thinking like an entrepreneur. And the students that follow them get to benefit from all these ideas as well. And together, we get to change the world. So I want to close out this week and this year grateful for your support every single time of showing up, supporting me, likes, comments, the DMs that I get, you know, together we get to make tomorrow better than today and accelerate positive change. So all of you, I wish you nothing but success in 2023. Happy New Year. Take care, stay safe, stay safe and uh, go make tomorrow better than today. Bye.